Hi everybody. Welcome everyone back to Loon Dev's YouTube channel. In this video, I will help everyone understand everything related to Bootstrap's carousel. How we manipulate, control, manipulate. After this video, everyone will grasp it easily and then can customize its interface to their liking in a simple way. Believe me, this will be an extremely detailed and extremely easy to understand tutorial. If you find it interesting, don't forget to subscribe and like the article. That will give me more motivation to continue making videos. Thank you. Now let's get started. Here I have prepared an HTML file. And three photos to use for this project. Our first thing is to embed Bootstrap into the system. There are two ways. One is that people can go to Bootstrap's homepage to download the source code. The second way is to do like me, access the Bootstrap CDN website. This website will provide us with CSS and JavaScript links of Bootstrap for us to easily use. With the CSS link, I will place it in the head of the website so that it has priority to load first. And put the JavaScript below to download last. Make sure your device can access the internet so the system can download these resources to the website. To build a carousel design with Bootstrap, we need to create a class named Carousel. This class will contain all the content of a needed carousel. For each carousel, certain ingredients will be needed. The first and most important component is the list of images and content. So we will have a class named Carousel Inner. Inside will contain many carousel items, with each carousel item corresponding to one slide. In this project I will create three slide items. For each item there will be one image. Now, I will try to see the results. And it didn't appear at all. Then according to the principle of bootstrap. All items will be hidden. Only items with the class, active, will be displayed. So I'll try adding the, active, class to the slide position where I want it to appear. And it worked. This is the rule of bootstrap. Normally, the item selected to appear will be the item in the first position. With these images, I will assign it a class to set its width to 100%. For each item, there will always be an image. Also in some cases. We will also be asked to add paragraphs for each item. So in each item, right below the image section. Please declare an additional class carousel caption inside which will be any content you want to record. For example, here I will write a title to number the order, starting from zero. So we have separate paragraphs of text for each slide. By default, these texts will be white. If you want to change it to black to match your photos. We just need to add a class named Carousel Dark here, then the content will turn black. However, in this example, I think white will help me see the content easier, so I won't need it. The content has been duplicated. The second component we will need to implement is to create and control navigation buttons, to move to previous or next. For the previous navigation button, it will be a class named Carousel Control Previous, remember to use the button. To have an icon for this button, it is a span tag with class Carousel Control Previous icon. And this is it. It has already appeared. However, it will not work at this time. Because currently it's just a normal class. We have not yet determined where it will act and what task it will have. So first, with this carousel class, I create an id called carousel demo. In the button, I declare data BS target with the main value being the id of the carousel. Remember to put the hash sign here. Now it has been specified that it will affect the carousel with the id carousel demo. Next is its mission. With data BS slide with the main value as its task. And that is previous. So from now on, when the user clicks on it. It will affect the carousel with the id carousel demo with the task of returning to the previous item. It's already working. 
but not smooth. To help this carousel transition smoother, let's add the slide class here. And it should look pretty good now. After this previous button it works fine. Then similar to this method, we will create a next button. With class carousel control next to declare the button. Data BS target to specify where it will impact. and data bs slide is its job. With a span tag with class carousel control next icon, an arrow will be created. And that is the second part of a carousel. Now, when we click on the next button, when running to the last slide, it will continue to run back to the first one. This is a feature of Bootstrap, however. In certain projects and certain requirements. There will be times when we are asked that when we reach the last slide, it cannot continue halfway. In default state, Carousel has a variable data BS wrap with value true. This variable will dictate that our Carousel will be able to run forever without ending. If you don't want that to happen, just change the value of wrap from true to false. As you can see, when the slide reaches the last item, I cannot click next. Currently, every time we want to move a slide we have to click the navigation buttons. So if people want our slide to automatically advance to the next one, let's add a variable data BS ride with the value carousel here. At this time, every 5 seconds, the carousel will move to the next slide. The fun of this feature is even more than that. For example, with a certain item, you want it to be displayed longer or faster without affecting other items. This will be very difficult for self-coding, but with Bootstrap it is extremely simple. By default, each item will be displayed for 5 seconds before transitioning. If you want to change the display time of a certain item, add the variable data BS interval with the value of the time you want it to display, in milliseconds. For example, I want the first item to display for 2 seconds. The second item will display for 1 second. The third item defaults to 3 seconds. It's surprising, isn't it? Bootstrap has helped us extremely well in creating this carousel. Now we will come to the last component before proceeding with customization. Those are the dots that help us quickly navigate to the slider location we want to display. So we have the carousel indicators class. Corresponding to how many slides we will have, we will have that many buttons inside. In this project I have three items, so I will also have three buttons. At the beginning of the video, we specified that the first item is assigned the active class first. The first button will also be assigned the active class. When working to create two navigation buttons, we've talked about how a button can be understood and implemented. That is to let it know where it needs to act, and what its mission is. So it's the same with these buttons. Use data BS target to tell it where it needs to go. With data BS slide to use to specify which position to move to the slide. With the first button when clicked, I will ask it to move to the item at position 0 and similarly for the next buttons. So it worked fine. When I click on any button position, the item in the corresponding position will appear. So what if I want to change these white horizontal bars to images of the scaled items themselves? So let's come to the last step in this video, which is custom carousel bootstrap. For each item there will be a different image, now I will put that image into each button below. Here it is. Continuing like this I'll take the remaining photos. Now when I click on any image, the item containing that image will automatically be displayed. 
However, in terms of design, it is broken. Our task is to write a few lines of CSS to make it look neater. Don't worry because we'll only write a few short lines of CSS. So now I will write CSS here. For images inside the carousel indicators class. I stipulate that its width will be 70 pixels and display. Block. As for the buttons containing these images, it will have a width equal to the image inside, which is max content. Add important to ensure that when a CSS conflict occurs with Bootstrap, max content will take priority. Finally, with the Carousel Indicators class, the default position, absolute attribute is to overlap the slide. So I'll destroy it by unset so it stays below. so it's much more beautiful inside. Additionally, if you want to customize the active status of these buttons, you can also do it easily with a few lines of code. For example, here, I look for which button is in active state. The image inside will have a red border added. So it's a song. Simple, right? Similarly, you can customize anything, any element in the carousel that you want. This is the entire content of this lesson. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment, I will answer them for everyone. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, your support will help me have more motivation to share more. Thank you everyone, see you again in the next video.